Welcome friends, in this video we are going to start our very first application on Coin. I hope so you have saw our previous video where I explained that what Coin is and how we are going to actually implement it. So yeah, let's get started. First of all select this empty activity in your Android studio. Name it as, let's say Coin example. Since this is a demo video where I am going to teach you what Coin is. So this would be preferably my application name. Yeah, let the thing set. So meanwhile, I can show you what are the dependencies which are required for Coin. So I would suggest you guys you can use any sort of AI to get your Coin dependencies, or you can just copy them. You can pause the video and copy them, and I will upload the GitHub link in the description. Like you can get the GitHub link. I will show you what's my Git link. So yeah, let the griddle sync and meanwhile you can just copy the dependency which I am providing. Come inside your griddle scripts and inside this go to your application level. This is not in your project application level. I have some issues related to my minimum compiler SDK. I am changing it to 35. You can, if you have 35 then it's good. Else you can change this thing to 35. Now let's copy few implementations. These are the files which are required for the Cohen. So you can pause the video and you can definitely copy them without them the implementation of coin would be like a little bit tough. And then you, these are the some helper dependencies which you can say for coroutines and then we have something for our retrofit which is basically used for our API call. So in this video we are basically not going to make any API call. The thing which we are going to do is like we are going to have a fake API and we are going to implement it okay so this is not a, like a real application full fledged application this application i'm developing so that you can basically have a idea that how to implement coin inside our application okay so let the griddle sync yeah in my case it is synced so what i want you guys is to create a package over here let's come over here and create a package name it as a data package and yeah in this data package but the first thing which you are going to have is uh, another package name it as model inside this model we are basically going to have our data class yeah this would be our model then we want to have another one the another one would be like let's say api where we are going to make our api call and then we should have a repository let's get our repository over here R E P O S I T O R Y. That's simple. Just keep coding alongside you, like it will help you guys. Oh, by mistake, I created is as a class. I want to create a package over here. Let's come over here and create an API package. Yeah, that's it. We have our API, we have our data class, and we have our repository. And then inside of a UI layer, I would like to have one more package, which is my view model. In this view model, I will just basically have my view model, and that's it, I guess. And yeah, one more thing let's have a utility package inside this util. We can have some helper class if you want. And one more, the important thing, the most important one is a package for dependency injection, like from where we are actually going to define our packages. And yeah, that's pretty much. And what we else want is an application. This application will basically help our application, our app to host Coin. So let's have a Coin demo application. Let's have it over here. This is our Coin demo application. Perfect. And then what I want is to have a screen. So inside this. UI layer, let's create another package, name it as screens. We will have the screens inside this. So basically, this is a MVVM architecture base, like we have this as an MVVM. You can see we have our model, we have our views, and we have our view model. So, yeah, this is how basically this application is going to look like. The first thing which we are going to implement inside our application is our data class inside the model. Inside the model, let's create a data class. Let's name this data class as users. Let's name it as users. 
okay my mistake i have created it as a class what we want is to create it as a data class yeah data class user and that's perfect and what a user shall have you shall have an id name and a email that's pretty obvious and all of it is going to be in format of string except the id it's going to be a integer let it be an integer and let's have another val this val would be let's say name the name would be of type string and then let's have an email email would be of soft type string yeah now let's move towards our api in this api what we are going to do is like we are going to have a interface i guess you are familiar with what is interface let's name this interface as user api okay let's name it as okay my mistake user API that's pretty much what we want I hope so you are familiar with how this thing works if you have no idea then I can show it to you guys like let me give you a quick introduction like what was the MVVM and what was green architecture inside this this is like a normal MVVM one like if we have a normal MVVM then we don't have this domain layer basically okay this domain layer is something like okay yeah so this domain layer is like specifically added whenever we want to have something like a clean architecture but this is like a very small project so inside this small project i would not recommend you to have this domain layer this is optional for clean architecture we have our use case file inside this domain layer basically this is used for encapsulating our logic and then we have our data layer inside this data layer we basically have all of our stuff inside this data layer we have our api like i'm having if i'm having an api call it will be inside my data layer and yeah if i have some response this response is actually nothing this response is actually the entity which i'm creating this is the response is like a model this this layer like this package can have several names the one of the name can be like entity model or we can name it as response like it can have various name it all depends upon since this is a data class storage we can name it as anything if you have any idea about the depend that database so i guess you should be aware like what an entity is and what an attribute is so basically this user is an entity and all of these are its attributes okay in a database the name of the user which is going to be stored is called an entity and all the attributes like we have over here now the thing is like we have an interface now let's get this interface done but we are going to have an interface like we are going to first of all have a at the rate get annotation which is basically provided to us by retrofit like we are trying to get the users from our database okay we are trying to store the users we are trying to mimic the functionality like how we are trying to get an api call so this is what we are trying to do let's try to get our user api the first thing is let's have at the rate get annotation and what i want to get is like users then let's have a function which is, which will be preferably suspend suspend function get users and this will be of type list now what i mean from this like i have a suspend function this means this can be called only inside a coroutine and we have a function get users this thing is just returning me a type list of users okay let me just modify this a little bit we can have a response the response will be of type list and this response is provided to me by retrofit so the suspend function get users is actually going me to get a response and that response is of type list and list of what list of users so whenever we are trying to get the users this will basically return me the list of users so the next thing which we are going to have is like this is a very simple api call like this is it 
like this is just a dummy api we are not trying to fetch any real data so yeah that's enough we are just trying to return the list of the users which we are handling over here and the what next is like we are going to work on repository and this repository is like let's name it as user repository let's name it as user repository and that's it so this would be like a very simple one what we are going to do is we are going to extend it like this user repository basically requires our api that's pretty simple as far as you remember this user let me show you that my repository is basically dependent upon my api for its working let me just have a look where i have implemented it yeah okay so what is like my api is basically dependent on the retrofit client or any sort of third party client which is not on our case but my repository basically deals with my api to get the data and my api will get the data and it will transfer it to the repository in some good cases what we have is a repository implementation to hide the way we are trying to connect with our api that's an essential part to hide our data like it's a very good approach which we will talk about in a some other project like why we are having the repository implementation like you can see i have a data source then i have a data source implementation like what is the use of having a data source implementation inside our project or what is the use of having a repository implementation inside our project we will get to it later on but yeah meanwhile we shall continue now i would say that this was a bit size video so i would suggest let's start with some let's start with the another video in that we will work on the repository so let's meet in the next video that's it for this video